what is going on everybody welcome back to another video on the big blue in the bronx youtube channel uh be sure to hit that like button comment and subscribe turn on post notifications so you know when the live stream pops for video drops appreciate we all coming back this normally would be a day i drop a podcast episode but there's really no reason for it since i did the uh cowboys recap on saturday um and then we obviously got the preview for the commanders game on saturday as well and i want to release more videos as we go uh, i want to grow the channel a little bit more we kind of hit a uh plateau at 779 as of right now and during the regular season for the nfl i usually just release podcast episodes and do live streams uh, i really want to do a little bit more than that just to get some new subscribers in here grow the channel a little bit more um, and yeah, and also it's going to be Yankee videos as well. It's just not going to, it's not just going to be Giants videos. Uh, so just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. This one, I was going to wait till the off season to do, but I'm like, you know what? Let's get it done now. Um, maybe something changes over the next six games where it's terrible. Um, but I'm going to go into it right now. The topic of the day is. Should Darius Slayton be re-signed by the New York Giants? Let's get right into it. We'll start with the rookie season, the background, all that stuff. So, uh, he was drafted in 2019 with the 171st pick out of Auburn. And he sustained an injury in training camp. He made his debut in the Bengal game with a really nice catch that, you know, put the Giants to one yard line. And then they ran it in with Rod Smith, I believe it was. One of the running backs they had. Um... And then he resustained the injury that he originally had. I think it was hamstring or oblique, something like that. And that left him inactive until the Tampa Bay game where he made his mark on a big reception downfield uh, for the Giants. Then really didn't get much traction against Washington. He got his first touchdown against the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, not really much against New England. Uh, he actually did some kick returns for the Giants. Not really too successful in that area. Uh, he had... Two catches for two touchdowns against the Detroit Lions. I know everybody remembers that game. Uh, those were not in garbage time. I just want to clarify that. Um, then the Jets game, he had over 100 yards. His first 100-plus yard game in the NFL, also with two touchdowns. Um, and then also you go to Philly, where he caught two touchdowns and over 150 yards from Eli Manning. And the next game, he caught a touchdown from Eli Manning. And really, that was it for him, you know, in terms of uh, touchdowns and big plays uh, the rest of the season. But it was impressive. It was impressive out of a fifth-round pick. We didn't know he was going to be, you know, uh, this good of a receiver for a fifth-round pick with Golden Tate there, with Sterling Shepard there, with all these different guys. So uh, he had eight touchdowns in... 2019 which actually was among the league leader receiver wise in terms of rookie receivers you know i think dk metcalf was there, there was a couple other guys as well um but he was among the top of the rookie receiver class in terms of touchdowns 740 yards 48 receptions so he did have some drop issues but you could definitely see there was a connection to be made with him and daniel jones uh who many people thought and still think he is the heir of eli manning you know the future of the franchise so we move into the next season and it's really starts to uh really starts to take a downturn here now a lot of people assumed that Darius Slayton would be a number one wide receiver that he had the skill set for that um obviously we know to this day he is not a number one wide receiver and it's just as if in my personal opinion the coaching staff the judge coaching staff really tried to make him into a number one wide receiver and force him to the ball and he really wasn't that type of guy. Um, I thought there was a lot of pressure on him to be this number one wide receiver. Um, but with that being said, they started going away from that later in the year and then the next year. But to be specific, he did catch two touchdowns against the Steelers. Had a rough game against Chicago. Uh, fumbled the ball. Actually, no, maybe it was Damian Ratley who fumbled. But I'm pretty sure uh, he may have fumbled against the 49ers that is true actually so i just looked it at uh looked it up uh not really much traction about mid receiving stats like three receptions 48 yards three receptions 53 yards 
through that span in terms of those games, like three receptions a game. That's not too much. Um, then Dallas, he hit an uptick, eight receptions, under 29 yards, no touchdowns, but some big receiving plays for him, uh, a couple of Jones rollout throws and long balls and all that stuff. He caught uh, his third touchdown of the season against Washington, which would be his last reception as a touchdown uh, for the rest of the season. Then against Philly, and it really just plateaued. Well, it didn't even plateau. It just went down from there, and there was some sporadic stuff for like against Philly at home. Um, five receptions, 93 yards. There was a big play to him downfield. Um, also against Cleveland, four receptions, 74 yards. That was against uh it was with Colt McCoy quarterback, so you can't really uh, take too much into that. But overall, it just started going down. And, you know, it would make a lot of sense for me to say, well, this is normal. Well, it's really not, considering that they wanted him to be the number one receiver. And it also factored in that, hey, the Giants were the 31st best passing offense in the NFL, and the Jets were 32nd. So it's not like this is normal. It wasn't. Giants bottle here. They got a training camp. Anyway, so we move into 2021, right? They get Kenny Galladay. They get Kadarius Tony. So is everybody assuming that Darius Slayton is on the out or something like that? Whatever. So the first two games, he actually catches a touchdown against Washington. Should have been two because he did drop one in the end zone. Um, one of the bigger plays in the Denver game, backtracking, uh, was that offsides and Jones knew he had a free play threw it downfield he had one reception against Atlanta was inactive the next uh three games I forget whether that was injury yeah I believe it was injury that inactive uh for the next three games 63 receiving yards against Carolina no receiving yards for the next two games against the AFC West opponents um then four receptions for 37 yards against Tampa Bay and it really just it wasn't there he did catch a touchdown um actually no yeah well actually fast forwarding a little bit both of his touchdown catches on the season were against Washington from two different quarterbacks um one being against Washington with Jake Fromm at, at home so I don't know if you really want to count that but overall man just a disappointing season his catch percentage was 44.8 339 yards the season before his catch percentage was a 52.1 uh both just lows for uh the moment and then we move into 2022 we move into 2022. Is Darius Slayton going to be cut? Is he going to be traded? Right? So the New York Giants really didn't involve him too much in the preseason. And then they go out there. Right? They go out there and they have him take a cut in the salary. And then week one, he's inactive. Wandale Robinson's on the field. Sterling Shepard's on the field. Kenny Galladay's on the field. Darius Tony's on the field. David Sills is on the field. But Darius Slayton isn't. A lot of people were like, David Sills is active, but Darius Slayton isn't. So then he's active for the next two games, but he doesn't get a single target. He doesn't get a single catch. And now Shep goes on IR. Now there really is no connection with that because Shep is more of a slot receiver. Same thing with Kadarius Toney. Um, in terms of him, he got injured during that stretch after Carolina. So he was not available for the Dallas game. And then uh, he really struggled against Chicago. It, it took him a little bit to warm up. Uh, he had a drop on a pass interference penalty. And then, you know, a lot of people criticized him for the uh, Tyrod Taylor interception where he could have defended the ball a little bit better. Uh, and he had one reception for 11 yards, which is basically on a stick concept route. But then he broke it open with Daniel Jones against the Green Bay Packers, which was a part of the, uh, the comeback. 79 yards on six receptions. Um, great for him, obviously. One reception against the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, not necessarily ideal, but the Giants were trailing a lot in that game, and a lot of things offensively weren't working till late. Jacksonville, three receptions, 58 yards, and a touchdown. Obviously, that deep ball keeps working. Um, 95 receiving yards, three receptions against Houston Texans and a touchdown a couple of big plays there obviously the yards after the catch were big that game for Darius Slayton they were very big um I don't know what the stat is there but whatever um you know he had the long third and nine touchdown and he also had his first reception 
where he was just breaking tackles and getting inside the five yard line for the Giants to score. Um, five receptions, 86 yards against Detroit, and then three receptions, 63 yards against the Dallas Cowboys on Thanksgiving. So now we come to the point of should he be resigned, should he not be resigned. I'm going to go ahead and say, by the way, his uh, catch rate on the season is an all-time high of 61.4, just for you guys who like the analytics and stuff like that. Um, he's got 476 receiving yards, which was more than last year. Uh, he's got two touchdowns on the season, 27 receptions, 17.6 yards per reception, which is pretty impressive. Actually, that's a career high for him. So if you ask me, I think Darius Slayton should be resigned. Um, now, it would make more sense. It would make more sense if Daniel Jones was coming back and you have Darius Slayton because you do want to have that some sort of a connection, whatever. Um, but it actually saves you a bit of draft capital. We know the New York Giants are very scarce in that receiving room. They're very barren. Um, Kenny Galladay is not here next year, likely. Wandale Robinson's coming back from an ACL. Um, you know, Richie James is probably not going to be here next year. You're going to need a whole different wide receiver room. And Darius Slayton actually gives you a solid option, not just, you know, as a receiver overall, but what the Giants have been struggling with is just getting separation on the outside. And he is a guy that takes the top off of a defense to allow those underneath routes for Daniel Bellinger, for Lawrence Cager, for all these different guys. So he is a guy that defenses actually respect, and they're gaining respect for. The last two years, they really didn't respect him a ton because the Giants were not throwing to him. But this year is a whole different story. It's a whole different turnaround. And he's always kept his head up. You know, he's been patient. Uh, he talked about patience in that one presser he had uh, where his mom was talking to him about patience or something like that, whatever. But um, he should be resigned. He should be resigned either way. And listen, is it a little less convincing that he should be resigned? Maybe if Daniel Jones is not resigned by the team? Sure. But at the same time, either way, he has a solid option in the receiving room. He's a threat on the outside. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to take four, maybe even three draft picks on a wide receiver. You could put that towards linebacker. You could put that towards O-line. You could put that towards center. You could put that towards DB if you have to. But Darius Slayton, in my opinion, has earned a second contract from the New York Giants. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops for your drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Peace out, guys. See you later, and stay cool.